and uh, in this video I want to talk about an oldie but a goodie the Airfix 124 scale Hawker Hurricane Mark 1 now Airfix have got quite a few 124 scale uh, aircraft kits on the market and if like me you've come back to the hobby after quite an absence you might be wondering a little bit about these kits I guess the first thing you need to know is these kits have been around uh, the first ones anyway in 1971 this particular kit, the uh, Hawker Hurricane Mark I, um, first was released to the market in 1973. So if you're uh, keeping count, this kit's now a grand total of 43 years old. What makes it a little bit confusing when it comes to buying these kits is that in fact there are several models that have been made over the years. So they, uh, Airfix were making these into the 1990s and even into the 2000s, only recently a few years ago they made the uh, 124 scale Hawker Tempest which is a fantastic kit and quite honestly in a different league to the one we're about to look at this is one of the first four kits that Airfix released in the 124 scale there was this one um, there was a Mitchell Smith 109E there was a Spitfire Mark 1 and a P51D Mustang and of the first four original releases I think probably the Hurricane was the best one and certainly when I opened this kit up, and I already have had a bit of a peek at it, I was quite impressed with it. So, not to be discounted out of hand, and that's the reason why I've decided to do the review. Now, this kit's been in almost continuous production since 1973, so it's fairly easy to find in the hobby shops and also um, second-hand and at flea markets and online eBay and that kind of thing. Um, the particular one you see here... Uh, this box art first appeared in 2011 and it features quite some quite striking and very beautiful artwork there of a uh, Hawker Hurricane Mark 1A uh, streaking across the skies. It's sort of giving um, allusions to the Battle of Britain, which of course this aircraft was a very important part of. Um, ironically, the picture actually does show some detail on the Hurricane that you won't get in the kit. This particular version of the new artwork was released in 2014, which is when this kit was made. And the most significant change is you can see over here that they've got a panel here that indicates that this kit comes with a couple of paint brushes, 15 acrylic paints, two brushes, and some uh, poly cement. Now, if you get the kit with the paints, you do lose out on one thing. You get the same model, so there's no problem there but you only get one choice of colour scheme and decals whereas if you get the version that looks almost identical to this but doesn't have the side panel here and doesn't include the paint you get a choice of two colour schemes and two sets of decals so a little bit of a trade off there but I already knew what the colour scheme was going to be obviously it's the, uh, the brown and the, and the green from the aircraft of the RAF at that time and so I'm more than happy with it the Hawker Hurricane, obviously a very famous aircraft, and this particular version of Airfix to decide the model is arguably one of the more famous variants of it. Um, this is the type of aircraft, the 1A, that saw service in the Battle of France in 1938, and uh, also formed the backbone of the RAF during the Battle of Britain. It doesn't get quite as much um, attention, I guess, as its uh, more sexy looking cousin, the Spitfire, but it was certainly an absolutely critical aircraft um, in that time. So let's have a look at the kit itself. You have to excuse my kit. It's come from the UK, so it's got lots of stickers and things all over it. Um, obviously, it comes in a fairly big box. It's the modern style Airfix um, packaging, as you can see there. Put that aside for a sec. Now, I've already opened this box up because it came from the UK, so I wanted to make sure I had all the parts and I didn't have to contact the um, seller. But I haven't actually assembled the kit, so basically what you see here is what you'll get. First of all, the instructions have been updated into the new style that Airfix likes. Well, at least they give the impression they have. When you actually open up the instructions themselves, they're basically the same instructions. In fact, they're identical instructions to what came in the 1973 edition of this kit. And I know that because I got online a bit earlier and just had a quick look at a, um, an old copy of the, of the instructions. So you're not going to get in the, the uh, sort of extra paint information and the colouring in, uh, coloured in pieces that Airfix like to use in their instructions now. Nonetheless, they're uh, quite clear, quite straightforward, so I don't think anyone that's done a few models should have too many problems with them. 
As I said, because this is the set that comes with the paint, you only get one choice of decals. So that's it here. I'm seeing a little bit of paint stuck on there. Now, a lot of people go on about the Airfix decals not being particularly good, but honestly, I haven't had any trouble with them up till now. And that might prove to be different with these ones, but they look fine to me. They're quite matte. Um, they're in register, which is really important to me. Um, there aren't a lot of them though, which might surprise some people, but actually uh, an aircraft like this did have quite a bit of stenciling on it and actually very little of it's represented uh, in this decal sheet. So that's one indication of its age of the kit. Another fairly obvious indication too is just the way the kit's laid out. It's all in one bag and all the different sprues are in there. You can see I've already collected a whole heap of loose parts. This was a fairly common thing that used to happen with a lot of the older Efix kits for some reason. They never used to seem to stay on the sprue during transport. So when I opened up this kit, there was a whole heap of loose parts, which I've just put in this bag so I don't lose them. And that's, that's fairly typical. The actual kit has been molded in uh, the type of styrene plastic that Airfix seems to prefer these days for their new releases as well. Um, which I don't mind. It's fine. It's a little bit soft, but it's it works fine. You can paint it, you can work with it, sand it, that kind of thing. So I don't really have any uh, problems with it. When it comes to the detail in this kit, I think you've got to take a step back and think about when this was made. Uh, 43 years ago. Truth be told, probably most of the people that were involved in designing uh, this kit are no longer with us. It's been that long. And in the context of 1973, it's pretty darn impressive. Remember back then I was a young Daniel and I was uh, modeling typically a 172 scale because that's what was in uh, my pocket money range. And um, for 1973, you got a very basic 172 scale kit with no interior detail or engine. Uh, you've got a slab of plastic for a seat, a pilot you could barely make out, and half a dozen to a dozen parts that sort of slapped together and made up something that kind of vaguely looked like the subject matter. And that's really what an awful lot of us uh, knew Airfix for, is cheap and cheerful plastic kits that you could build on the weekend with your pocket money. So when these kits came out, they were quite a revelation. Now, I couldn't afford one of these as a young fella, and my um, parents couldn't either. So for me, it was just something that stayed out of reach on the top shelf at the hobby store. But there was um, one friend of the family, and their son had the Spitfire kit from these first initial four releases. And I can remember, still remember, being quite blown away with the level of detail and the number of parts and so on that come in this kit. So if I try and look at this kit from the perspective of someone back in 1973, it is pretty darn amazing. And I guess um, that's why, 43 years later, Airfix can still um, make these kits and put them out there and find a market. If you look at them from the eyes of someone that perhaps has just come back into the hobby or just started in the hobby perhaps and uh, you've got used to some of the new CAD based um, models that are coming out now, including ones from Airfix, it could prove to be a little bit disappointing. I think it's fair to say the 148 scale Airfix Hawker Hurricane has more detail overall than this particular kit does. But you do get a lot of plastic for your money. And there were some things about this kit, even for its time, that were pretty revolutionary. If I just hold up this um, lower wing, uh, sorry, upper wing panel here, you can see, for example, that it's got recessed panel lines. Now that's something that wasn't that common back when this kit was released. In fact, I don't know of any other Airfix kits that had it at that time. Um, there is some rivet detail on this, and the rivet detail is very soft. I'm not quite sure whether that's actually deliberate or whether that's just an indication of the age of the moulds and they're starting a little bit old and so the, the rivets aren't as detailed. But overall, that's pretty good. One thing you will notice on all the parts though is that they are all going to need clean up. This is an, uh, an old model and the moulds are clearly a bit tired. And so before you can actually assemble anything on this kit, you're gonna have to go around with a file and just tidy up all the edges of the parts, which is something you kind of expect with an older kit like this. So I wasn't too surprised to see that. One thing that also was impressive though, given the age of the kit, was that I didn't really see any warpage of the parts, particularly large parts like the bottom here of the, of the wing and the, and the fuselage. That all looks pretty good to me. And actually, it looks really nice. 
the reason you build a 124 scale kit and in the day is because they have a they have a presence about them you just can't get from smaller scales once you put one of these together they really do look very impressive and if you've got any interest at all in uh, detailing or trying your hand at detailing 124 is probably a good place to start because you've got plenty of scope to detail them but also you um, have a fairly large kit to work with so it's a bit easier to make parts for and things like that but overall that's pretty good now if you want a full review of all the parts you can get those on various other videos on site so I'm not going to bore you with taking the whole kit apart but I will show you one part that I think is worth noting and that's uh, this part here now the back of the hurricane uh, was actually fabric and wood and you can see signs here of a bit of wear around uh, the moulding here. It's actually a bit worse on the other side, but I won't pull it out. Um, but that really was about the worst I found, other than the fact that there's a bit of flash and a bit of cleanup required. But overall, given that this has been, as I said, pretty much in continuous production for 43 years, this mould held up fairly well. The other thing you notice about this kit, if you've seen any of the first four, and this is one of the first four, is this is by far the most detailed of any of the first four. It is a much better kit in that respect. You just don't even have to build it just to look at the component list and see how it's put together. One interesting thing about some of the earlier kits, for example, was um, that one, there was actually no interior detail for the wheel wells at all. And that was the case on the Mission Smith 109E I was building. I was frankly quite surprised because even for a kit like the 109 that came from 1971, I would have expected in this scale that it would have had some detail. So it looks like the Hurricane was probably the last of the four that they first built and it benefited from some of the feedback that they'd got from modelers about the things that they wanted to see in kits of this size. As I said earlier, if you buy this particular kit, you get the paints and cements. Now I don't, I use the brushes, I, I put the polystyrene cement aside, I rarely use that these days. Um, I did try the paint and I wasn't particularly fussed about it to be honest. I don't really like the humble uh, acrylic paints all that much. But they come in the kit and they don't really cost you anything. And if you're a parent and you're watching this video and you're thinking about getting one of these kits uh, for your son or daughter, one recommendation I would make is you need to really use a primer uh, before you apply any of these paints, even if you're going to be uh, brush painting them, which is probably what a lot of youngsters are going to be doing. So I would recommend along with the kit you get something like this which is to me a surface primer and that's a um, acrylic paint primer so once they've built the kit they spray that over the front first or over the top of the model first and then they can follow that up with the various um, colors that come with the kit i think if you do that you'll probably end up with a much nicer model and i'll be much happier with it these aren't necessarily the easiest kits to build uh, if my little bit of experience with the 109 was ink to go by uh, a very common trait with a lot of these kits is th there is quite a bit of engine detail included with it, which is really nice. Um, and it's surprisingly good. However, it does make it difficult for you then to fit the engine cowl panels and things over the top. So if you wanted to have the kit built so that the plane looked like it was completely in one piece and you could remove the cowling to, to reveal the engine, in theory, you should be able to do it. In a lot of these EFIX kits, it's a bit tricky to make it actually work in practice. So my advice would be um, to practice that first. Just make sure do a dry run without cement and make sure that it fits properly and see if you need to do any sanding. Certainly when I get further into actually building this kit, I'll do a follow-up video and I'll tell you a little bit about my experiences uh, with doing that as well. Overall though, why would you want to buy what is now a 43 year old kit other than the nostalgia factor well basically the first reason is pretty self-evident you get an awful lot of plastic um, the kits are not I guess unreasonably priced by Airfix's standards these days but they are certainly not the cheapest kits that they make by any measure and if I'm honest I don't think the value is in them if you're going to pay full retail I, um, I haven't personally bought any of these at full retail if you live in the UK, you might be lucky enough to pick one of these up second hand. Um, there's quite a few of them floating around, I believe. Also, some of the hobby shops over there occasionally have had sales on them. And Airfix themselves seem to have at least one or two sales a year, if you keep an eye on their online site, where at least one or two of the kits from the 124 scale range 
are on sale and typically with the older first generation if you like these first four that they made they will usually be you know anything up to half the price uh, the retail price of them in the stores so they're definitely worth keeping an eye out for those sales and if you are looking at getting one then I'm going to say to you even before I build this just on what I already know that the Hawker Hurricane is the one that you want to get out of the first four so that's out of the Spitfire the 109 and the Mustang, Hawker Hurricane would definitely be the kit to uh, to choose from. Detail's pretty good. It's not going to match what you can get in the new kits, but it's one heck of a big kit, and um, there's a lot of fun to be had in it, I suspect. So we'll find out in the next video.